Hi to everybody, how are you? I'm Luca Torilli, guitarist of Rhapsody. I'm Christopher Lee, and I'm sitting here in this recording studio. I'm Henry Sturken, and I'm Joey's management partner in the management of Rhapsody. I'm Jean Diamond, and I'm Christopher Lee's agent. My name is Juan Aneros. I manage Christopher Lee's website and his fan club. So when I wrote this saga, so important to give the most important touch was to have a, a great actor as main narrator. Christopher Lee, what you can ask for more, you know. We love Lord of the Rings. One actor that we love extremely is Christopher Lee for his incredible career and uh, his face. I love his face, the expression of the face, the way he speaks. I heard one CD of him speaking this uh, Tolkien ensemble, no? And uh, me and Alex were amazed. We were really, wow. I received an email uh, one day from Joey De Mayo saying that he um, wanted to ask about the possibility of um, getting Mr. Lee. So we set about getting a hold of Mr. Lee. We did get a hold of Mr. Lee, and we presented uh, the band in their purest light. We gave examples of the music. We gave examples of some of the text. And I think he was genuinely interested on an artistic level. I mean, you can see that the guy has nothing to prove creatively, so now it's time for him in his career to do things that he thinks are interesting. I got the phone call and then I was asked him to put it on email so that one can read what it is. And uh, Christopher uh, and I then discussed it and he heard the tape of the boys and he liked it. I'd heard about this band, that they were one of the most popular in the world. And as I've said many times before, I think one should really do everything in one's career as long as it lasts, with the possible exception of adult movies. But uh, I think one really should do everything, because everything is a challenge, and it should be. There was a famous British conductor, long dead now, called Sir Thomas Beecham, and he made this wonderful remark. He said one should try everything in life except incest and folk dancing. He has a thick, rich, baritone voice that actually crosses down into the bass register. It's very, very impressive. It was a good time for all creatures of the earth, but fate decreed that the dark prophecy of a demon knight could bring a tragic end to this piece, scarring their lives forever. I thought it was very exciting for Mr. Lee to participate in something like this. Obviously because, I mean, he's a trained opera singer himself, and because he's 81, and uh, he has fans from different generations, you know, because he's been working in the industry for 57 years, so he has fans which are more or less his age, and he has new discovered fans, you know, from working in Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, so I thought. Metal music is, is modern, you know, it has quite a young following and it will open up his popularity to yet another uh, generation and another, if you would like to say, top type of fan. I am wearing the clothes of a king who is also a priest because we are really talking and singing about an indeterminate historical period. It's vaguely Anglo-Saxon to look at the crown, the clothes. Very vaguely, but it's not defined. And so I'm wearing these clothes, priest king, and you will see me introducing what is in fact called the Symphony of the Enchanted Lands, part two, The Dark Secret. For some people, it can represent a metaphor, no? Or for others, it can, can really represent a, a kind of uh, door to other dimension to escape the problem of the, the every daily life, no? And uh, I mean, for me, it represents a pa really parallel dimension. I have my sensation, my personal sensation is that uh, it could be a good, a good time for, for episode in the music that we are now proposing, you know? If more soundtrack style, more uh, film score, as you said, you know. It's everything but the movie. I mean, if you sit down and listen to this, you're hearing music, 
you're hearing actors, you're hearing dialogue, you're hearing singing. I mean, it's really theater and movies combined without the visual element. And of course, when they add the visual element in by way of video or uh, imagery or com you know computer uh, generated things like that, I think it's going to be a really, really new era for heavy metal. Maybe we are creating now in what we are all doing together. Who knows, we may be making musical history. I think the metal world needs that kind of, you know, approach and that kind of unique band. I just flew in a few days ago and uh, we did uh, three days of recording for orchestra, 80, 80 pieces, and uh, choir, and the result was really cool. Only one person could cross the dark lands surrounding Hargor and venture forth deep into the caves of Dar Kuno. His is a name in the world will never forget. He is Dar. For instance, in the Czech Republic, it's one of the few places in the world I think we could make a phone call uh, through our sponsor there and have the whole block um, have traffic stopped by the police. I mean, for a whole week, people couldn't drive on this particular street because there was too much ambient noise. So it, it's a really multinational thing with, well, if we count everything, everybody involved with, you know, easily 150 to 200 people involved. It's so the question is, if I hold it like that, it's too casual. If I hold it like this, you'll have to have a box. No problem. So it's like yes. this. It was a good time for all creatures of the earth. But fate decreed that the dark prophecy of a demon knight could bring a tragic end to this peace, scarring their lives forever.